In the summer of 2014, the world witnessed something that for decades, many thought would never happen. In the men's 100 meter dash at the NCAA Track and Field Championships, Trayvon Bromel, a true freshman from Baylor, managed to do this. Bromel in lane five, lock in lane six. Trayvon Bromel, the freshman does hold it. 9.99 seconds, unofficially rounded down to 9.97. The wind is legal, 1.3 meters per second. With an official clocking of 9.97 seconds, Bromel took this victory over Dentarius Locke from Florida State by just five one hundredths of a second, making him one of the very few freshmen to ever win this title. But what made this such a marquee moment in sprinting history was that Bromel had just turned 19 years old, still making him a junior athlete. This time had officially now broken Daryl Brown's previous mark of 10.01 seconds in the junior division, a time that had stood strong since 2003. For decades and decades, running under 10 seconds as a junior sprinter was considered next to impossible, but on this day, Bromel became the first athlete to ever break this mark. Now, after setting the track on fire in this race, the 19-year-old Bromel would go on to find tremendous success in the 100 meters, winning the Global Bronze in 2015, winning the Global Gold Medal for the Indoor 60 in 2016, and after battling through a serious Achilles tendon injury at the 2016 Olympic Games, Bromel has proven his longevity on the track, with a top 10 all-time performance in 2021, followed by yet another Global Medal in 2022. Bromel has proven himself to be a true fighter through injury and racing setbacks, and even though this 9.97 clocking in 2014 stood nearly unchallenged in the junior division for close to a decade, something bizarre has been happening over the last two seasons in the men's 100 meters, and in 2024, things are taking an even more bizarre turn when it comes to the 100. Starting in 2022, the floodgates officially opened to a new name breaking the 10 second barrier as the junior athlete Litsile Tebogo managed to not only break the world junior record once, but he managed to do it twice. In the early season, he ran a time of 9.94, literally jogging through the tape, which has proven to be a trend throughout his career. However, at the World Junior Championships in Cali, Colombia, Tebogo broke the 100 U20 record for the second time with a clocking of 9.91 seconds, all while taunting his opponent, Boaje and Krume, all the way through the tape. This was definitely one of the weirder record-breaking moments that you will ever see. But all the same, Tebohu ran a time of 9.91 seconds, and had he not turned his body a full 90 degrees to the side, he probably could have gone under 9.9. This brings us to 2023, where not one, not two, but three new names broke 10 seconds in the junior division, with Ronald Longa from Colombia running 9.99 in Sao Paulo, Brazil, Boajin Krume got his revenge with another 9.99 clocking, but the man of the year in the junior 100 was a man by the name of Assam Asinga from Suriname, who set the still standing world junior mark at 9.89, which was a time that he also ran in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Now, the complicated nature of this event really starts to unfold here, as Assam was provisionally suspended just before the 2023 World Championships due to the presence of a banned substance. And because of this suspension, he did in fact not compete in the Budapest World Championships last year. However, in an equally confusing perspective, his World Junior record still stands on the World Athletics page, despite not being able to compete less than two months after he ran this time. There seems to be a general lack of information concerning Asama Singa, as certain reports claim that he is about to compete, while other reports state that he is still outright suspended. So we'll leave a few articles down below to read about this athlete. But moving forward, this brings us to 2024, when just like Asinga, a new high schooler managed to break 10 seconds, this time on the exact same track as Asama Singa in 2023. Now for this 100 meter showcase, Christian Miller unleashed a devastating clocking of 9.93 seconds for the 100, beating out a few pros on this day and setting the stage for a crazy 2024. 
Now, this time also currently stands as the fastest wind legal overall time in the world for 2024, which is already something that you rarely see at any point in the season. But what looks even more bizarre are the true top sprinters in the world right now with legal wind. Right now, the top four athletes in the world goes as follows. Noah Lyles, the 26-year-old with his season opener of 10.01. There's Favor Ache at 22 years of age with his current season's best time of 9.96. There's Tamar's Column from Tennessee, the 19-year-old with a new season's best of 9.94. And atop them all is the 17-year-old phenom Christian Miller at 9.93. This goes 100% against the logic of how the top of the world rankings should look, as the higher that you go in the rankings, the younger the athletes become. Now this does look pretty bizarre, but we should also remember that different athletes have different incentives to peak at different times of the year. For Miller, he is likely reaching close to the top of his fitness this season, and it certainly will be challenging to run much faster. However, for Lyles, his eyes are set to Paris for this summer in the Olympics, so do expect much much quicker clockings from him as the months unfold. In all honesty, I have never seen a 100 meter rankings look quite like this. But what's really making me question reality is what happens when you look at all conditions races in 2024. Now for one reason or another, there have been countless races this season with winds over the allowable limit of 2.0 meters per second. And as many of you already know, if you run a race with an illegal tailwind, that performance does not show up in the official rankings. All the same, there have been a total of 12 athletes this year that have already broken 10 seconds under any condition, and out of these 12, 8 of them have been achieved with illegal tailwinds. Now this is a very interesting set of athletes that is starting to show their true talents in 2024, but the athlete at the very top of this list is a new name that is running extremely well, and this athlete is Isaac Bazio from West Texas, also representing Ghana. On April 5th, Bazio stepped to the line of the men's 100 in what appeared to be a casual 100 meters on his home track. But little did the competition know that he was about to run the fastest all conditions performance in 2024, with a new all conditions lead at 9.90 seconds. Now, yes, this time was assisted with a tailwind over the allowable, but it wasn't the hurricane type wind that we saw with a few other performances on this top 10 list. It was only positive 2.2 meters per second, just barely over the allowable limit. This means that under legal conditions, Bazio clearly can break 10 seconds. And it's also noteworthy to mention that this time was even faster than the performance of the Olympic silver medalist Kenny Benarek, who managed to bring home the win from this year's Kip Kano Classic at 9.91, and this race included many of the world's best. Bazio is yet another athlete coming out of the NCAA that is reaching some very solid performances, and I do not think that it's an exaggeration to say that nobody is really safe this year in the men's sprints. Granted, it is likely that many of the more experienced and top-ranked athletes will manage to find their way to the top, such as Christian Coleman, Noah Lyles, Kenny Benarek, and Fred Curley. And of course, there's Letsila Tabojo. But it is just so exciting to see new faces from the NCAA and even from the high school rankings challenge the pros. Track and field is notoriously an underreported sport, and there has always been the conversation of how to keep it growing and how to keep it healthy. But I think the foundation goes back to the athletes themselves, and with sprouting talents seemingly coming up every single week, I am feeling very optimistic about the future. And now I want to hear from all of you. What do you think about the landscape of the men's 100 right now? What do you think about the high schooler Christian Miller? What do you think about Favre Ache? What do you think about Noah Lyles in his season opener? And what do you think about Isaac Bazio from West Texas with his current season's best of 9.90? Thanks for watching, everyone. And as always, until next time.